All right, so we are going to continue our domain eukarya unit by now moving on to the plant kingdom. So kingdom plantae. So let's review a couple things first. So unicellular means single-celled. Multicellular is more than one cell. A prokaryote is a primitive cell. It doesn't have a nuclear membrane, doesn't have membrane-bound organelles. And then the eukaryote is that advanced cell that has all of those organelles, has the nuclear membrane, all of those things. So what are plants? They are a eukaryote. So let's review the plant cell. So plant cells are a little bit different from animal cells because they contain a cell wall and the chloroplast. They also have some of the other organelles. And then remember, photosynthesis takes place in these cells. So here you see your chloroplast. Here is your obvious rigid structure of your cell wall. And then don't forget the vacuole. So chloroplast and chlorophyll review. Chloroplasts are membrane-bound organelles that contain chlorophyll. And then the chlorophyll is that green material that you see in the chloroplast, and it's what causes photosynthesis to be so successful for the plant. So plant cell organelle review, here's just another image of these organelles. Keep in mind, you will have to be familiar with these again. So now to the new stuff. Types of plant cells. There are three types of plant cells. We have parenchyma cells, cholenchyma cells, and sclerenchyma cells. Now I know these words are super big, but they are, you're going to have to know the difference between them. So parenchyma are your most flexible cells. They're found in green leaves, green stems, fruits, roots. These are going to be those things that allow those plants to be so flexible in those areas. So if you look at our celery picture here, the P stands for parenchyma. So that's all of this here. It's all the parenchyma. Now the cholenchyma is supporting these surrounding stems and it's especially common in your young and developing plant stems and it connects also connects the leaf blade to the stem and if you look in celery if you have a broken celery in half you have those stringy strands that come out that's your cholenchymas those here so all of those little dots there and then last up is your sclerenchyma this doesn't have cytoplasm so this is kind of a very different cell than what you would think of but they don't have cytoplasm, and because of that, they're not all that jelly-like. They're very, they're very strong and help with that structure. So things like nutshells, like our acorn over here, tree bark, seed coats, any type of really strong structure of a plant is made of your sclerenchyma cells. So here's just another image showing that. So you see, even just looking at the cells, you see how much space is in between the parenchyma cells, and then here, there's even more, and then here, there's even more. And remember, there's no cytoplasm, so this is a lot more of a rigid structure. So plant tissues. So we just talked about the three types of cells. Well, these cells make tissues. So the tissues can be four different types. So there's meristematic, dermal, vascular, and ground tissue. So first up, meristematic tissues. These are rapidly dividing cells, and there's three types within these. So you have your apical meristems, intercalary meristems, and lateral. So apical, you just need to think the tip or the very top. This is where it's growing. When a plant is sprouting from a seed, this is what's growing up and causing that increase in height or increase in length of the tree. And if you look in this picture, it shows you right there. The little blue buds, those are all your apical meristems. Now your intercalary meristems are in the middle. They run down the middle of the plant. These are the reason why after you cut your grass, it still keeps growing back. The grass doesn't die. And then last up is your lateral meristem. So these are, as you look in this plant here, they're the rings. These are the rings on a tree. And this is why trees also increase in width, not just height. If you've ever seen a tree where there's like a cable tied around it or something tied around it, it wasn't cut off, the tree, after enough years, will grow around that because the tree's still getting wider even though the cable no longer fits its width. Next up is your dermal tissue. So dermal, epidermis, this means skin. It's equivalent to your skin cells. So there's four types. You have cuticle, stomata, trichomes, and root hairs. 
And those are all their functions. So the cuticle is preventing that water loss. It's that waxy covering of leaves, especially, that you see. Stomata are those openings for gas bordered by guard cells. This is very important for photosynthesis. Then you have your trichomes. These are the hair-like projections. They protect the plant. If you think about like a lamb's... I think it's lamb's ear, a lamb's ear plant. They're very, very fuzzy. Those have a lot of those. And then root hairs, they increase your surface area so that way you can take in a greater amount. If you remember, things like water and minerals come from the ground. When you think about it, when you pull out like potatoes or carrots, they have all those things coming off of them that also look like root hairs. And even just general, if you've ever pulled weeds before, you see all those root hairs. So here's a picture of stomata. So there are these little mouths here and they open and close to let gas flow in and out. If you remember, we watched the Magic School Bus video, and these are what he almost fell through when he fell out of the bus. So next up is your vascular tissue. This is xylem and phloem. Okay, there's a way you have to try to remember this. So xylem is carrying water and minerals, okay? And it's unidirectional, which means one way. And for example, rings on a tree are xylem. Phloem transports nutrients and food, a.k.a. your sugars. And they are bidirectional, which means two, so they move up and down. So however, you need to remember this, but xylem is one way, water minerals. And I think it's kind of like an easy way to think about it is like especially water. So like W, X, Y. So water and then X, Y. Those are next to each other in the alphabet. Phloem and sugar, I guess maybe PS is a common thing you might put at the end of a letter or whatever, to where PS, phloem, and sugar go together. So ground tissue, this is all those plant cells. So parenchyma, clenchyma, sclerenchyma, go back to those if you don't remember. But their major functions are things like photosynthesis, storage, support. These are your ground tissues. So now plant structure, root stems, leaves, and seeds. So we already did a lab a little bit looking at this. So roots, this, this is actually the first thing that grows out of the seed. The roots grow first. They take in your water and your nutrients, of course, and there's two types of root systems. There's the tap root system and the fibrous root system, and you will have to know the difference. So a tap root is a thick root with very small branching roots, whereas the fibrous root system is going to have numerous branching roots, and they're all about the same size. So this picture is oops, I'm go back. This picture is the best example of that. This is obviously a fibrous root system and this is a taproot system. So you think of a taproot, think of like a carrot. Think of a fibrous root system, think about when you pull weeds and you cannot get them up because there's so many roots branching out in so many different directions. Next we have stems. So the whole point of a stem is to support the leaves and reproductive structures. Without leaves, they can't do photosynthesis. And without reproductive structures, they can't reproduce. So stems are very important. They also transport water and other substances to the leaves and reproductive structures so they can grow and continue their processes. The leaves also have two major structures to them. There's the blade and the petiole. So when you look at a leaf, okay, here is the blade, which I'm going to be. Here is the petiole. So the petiole is just that little stalk almost that attaches it to the actual stem. And then the blade is, of course, that flattened part of the leaf. And most leaves actually have that same internal structure. And as I'm sure you're aware of, they're very, very important in gas exchange and transpiration. And if you remember, transpiration is where water evaporates. It's part of the water cycle. We keep touching back to everything we've talked about already this year. So it's just some common leaf characteristics that you can look at. If we get to it, we might be able to go outside and kind of do a little scavenger hunt looking for these. So major plant structures are seeds as well. So seeds contain that embryo. If you think about the word embryo, you should think about a baby. Okay, so it's like your baby plant. And it has the nutrients also for that embryo to start growing. And it's covered with a protective coat. If it was just the embryo, it would never survive. And it also... as 
it shows here, enables seeds to survive harsh environmental conditions. So a lot of times seeds come off in the fall, they have to survive through the winter, and they don't start growing till the spring, which is usually those favorable conditions. That's springtime. And then we have two different types. We have a monocot and a eudicot, or sometimes you'll hear the word dicot. So a cotyledon is what grows out of the seed. So mono means one, so there's just one. Eudi means many, or you could, it's also known as a dicot too. And dicot means two. Okay, so and if you look, it just kind of shows the differences in what happens. The biggest thing you should notice is the root systems. So monocots have a fibrous root system, whereas dicots have a taproot system. So plant hormones and responses. This is pretty interesting. This is how they affect how the plants grow, divide, all of that. So there's four major types. You have auxin, which affects your growth rate. So auxin is growth. Gibberellins, which affect your seed growth. So they affect how good your seeds are, whether they will be able to produce better plants in the future. Ethylene is fruit ripening. It's a gaseous hormone. So if you look, um, your, res your strawberry here, this is showing with auxin, but your strawberry, those would never ripen if they weren't exposed to ethylene. And then your cytokinins, which stimulate mitosis. Cytokinesis, remember, is that final divide of mitosis. So they stimulate that final divide, so the cells want to keep dividing and dividing and dividing, and then the plant will grow more because of it. There's also two types of plant responses. So you have nastic responses and tropic responses. Nastic cause independent movement. This is the Venus flytrap that you all are very aware of, I'm sure. But then even more interesting is your tropic responses. So this is response to an external stimulus. So you have phototropism, photo, think light, like this plant here. You have gravitropism, which is just growing towards gravity. So this one here. Okay, so if you lay a pot down, the plant's still going to grow up. And then five... Thigmotrophism is when it turns or bends around something. So these are all your vines. That's the really most common one. So plant evolutions and adaptations. When comparing present-day plants to algae, which we know are what? Algae is a plant like protist. Okay, so they have the following things in common. Both of them have cell walls made of cellulose. It's the same chlorophyll used in the algae as in plants, and they have similar genes, and they also store food as starch. So there's three types of plant groups. We have our non-vascular, seedless vascular, and seed-producing vascular. Okay, you have to know these three types. Very, very important. And this shows that classification. So here's your algae, which is your protist, and then you have your mosses, and then you have your ferns, which are your seedless vascular. And then these are your vascular with seeds. So if you look along this cladogram here, these are the most recent, is the seeds. So non-vascular plants, distinguishing characteristics, most of you know them as mosses. You take a walk through the woods, you're going to see moss. They're very similar to leaves, but they are also the most primitive of land plants. Next up is your seedless vascular. When you think of this, you're going to think about ferns. So ferns are the most common thing about seedless vascular. They do have xylem and phloem, which is your vascular tissue. Really important to note that. But they use, it's kind of similar to fungi. They use a spore system to reproduce instead of a seed. So obviously they're seedless, so they have to reproduce another way. And it's usually these little things called sori that are underside of the fern. Last up is your vascular seed plants, and these are obviously your most diverse, your most recent species of plants, and there's five divisions total, and we're going to talk about each one briefly. So first division is the Psychodophytes. These evolved before plants with flowers. They're the ones that you see in movies like Jurassic Park. Your next one is the Gonetophytes. These can live an astonishingly long time, but something you might be familiar with is ephedrine. This is a really common diet drug, diet pill, and that's what's found in these plants. The next one 
is Ginkgo phyta. There's only one living species, and it's called Ginkgo biloba. It's actually a really common supplement as well. And they have small fan-shaped leaves. These you also see in Jurassic Park. The next up and the two most important ones are Conifera phyta. So these are your conifers, your pines. They have cones. This is how they're different than the seeds that you would think of of a flower. They use the cones that release seeds. And kind of fun fact, the male and female cones are on different branches. So there's male cones and female cones. And the last division is Anthophyta. These first appeared most recently compared to the other ones. And they're classified three ways. So mono, di, uticot, which we just discussed. And they were the first flowering plants in this division. So because of that, they evolved after gymnosperms. These are the most recent angiosperms that produced. So division Anthophyta, there's a couple different things within it. You have your annuals, your biannuals, and your perennials. So your annuals die every year. Biennials live two years. And then your perennials live for several years. These tend to be your bulb plants. So things like tulips that come back every year, daffodils, daylilies. These are your perennials. Annuals are things you plant every year, like marigolds. And then angiosperms versus gymnosperms. Okay, angiosperms, the seeds are enclosed. They are fruiting or, oops, they are fruiting or flowering plants. So this is your angiosperm. Gymnosperms, the seeds are not part of a fruit. They are not just within like that apple core that you would think of. So the name actually means a naked seed. So your pines are your gymnosperms. Those are your naked seeds because they're not within a fruit. And then just parts of a flower for review. We're going to dissect a flower in class as well, and you have a worksheet on this. But if I were you, I'd kind of pause this and sketch this in your notes so you have it. And then here's just another view, too. This really shows the carpal and the stamen, which are the important male and female. So this is the male parts and female. And I would sketch these two drawings as well. That way you have those in your notes. And that's all.